It's me. Synthesis. That's what we're talking about today. More synthesis. Uh, ADSR. Those settings on your synthesizer. What, what are those? What do they mean? What do they do? Let's get into it. So, I have been in a synthesis mood lately. I also like synthesis as a topic, uh, you know, for these videos because it's like really bite-sized information that you can actually really use really quickly in your productions. I also think that the key to finding your own sound, or one of the one of the keys, is learning how to synthesize your own sounds. I mean, you don't have to become the next Bob Moog or anything like that, but you do want to have some elements in your tracks that you created. You want to be the guy that people search for on YouTube one day, you know, the lead sound from your hit song. You know, I, I think that that adds to your credibility, your cachet, your dopeness. Don't get me wrong on this one though. I mean, I, I have no problems with you reaching for Nexus or Omnisphere for, I mean, they sound amazing and it's, it's a really quick way. Don't let anything get in the way of working quickly and getting things out. But, you know, spend some time synthesizing your own sounds and having them ready to go as well. And, and just make that a part of your process. Synthesis needs to be, I think, a part of your process. Oh, the other thing to, to uh, mention is if you are a Nexus slash, oh, there's something in my eye. All right. No, it's still there. You going to cooperate? All right. If you are a Nexus or Omnisphere user and, uh, you know, and you're not really that interested in synthesis, this video actually helps you too because they still do have limited um, ADSR or envelope shaping. They have limited envelope shaping uh, parameters. Um, so you still need to know how to, you know, take that patch and maybe make it sound more like a pad using the, the, the amp envelope. So it bears learning how the envelope parameter works, whether you are using the Nexus or Omnisphere style kind of pre-made patch synth, or if you are creating your own synth patches from scratch, it doesn't matter. You still need to learn how envelopes work. They're they're fundamental to actually learning how sound works. But we'll get we'll get to that. So let's let's get into it. Okay, let's get started. I have a Thor open here. I like Thor for this because it's an old school style synth. Uh, it's great for you to get this concept you know, in your head, get you able to draw this concept in your head um, versus something like Serum or something that you can actually see the envelope. It's cool, but it, it, it's better if you can kind of get the concept in your head. So here we have the amp envelope, and this is where you see the ADSR settings. ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release. Okay, so the key concept to get here, the thing that really confused me is that Three of these faders are the same. They deal in time. So uh, how long How long is the question that they solve? Uh, the third one, sustain, is the only one that deals with amplitude. So when you leave the decay phase, the sustain is a level in volume. So that was the thing that really threw me off. So that's the concept you need to get. So... Here, we'll just start playing around here and see what, what things do. So with the sustain all the way up, everything I play holds its volume indefinitely. It just stays up at this volume, regardless of what happens. I mean, not regardless. It, it wants to go from nothing to full volume in the, in, in the attack phase. That's what it's going to do. And your only question here is how long it's going to take to do that. So... D don't see this as volume like how much attack you're getting like if i add this i'm adding more attack no you're adding more attack time you're making it take longer to get to the same destination it's always going to get to which is you know zero one it's actually <laughs> that's confusing uh zero db so it's going to go up to this destination every time just how long is that going to take so if we and this is, uh, it's calculated in milliseconds. So, you know, it's kind of self-explanatory now that you, now that you know where it's going, it's kind of self-explanatory what the fader is doing. Okay, so the next phase after the attack phase is the decay phase. So what this is, is so now your sound, your voice has gone from nothing to on. 
to, to fully, to fully at volume. And you've told it how long you want it to take to do that. Now you're telling it how long to get to this phase. That's the only thing that this fader does. It's, it's the bridge to this, to this phase. So after the attack phase is complete, after you've gotten the voice up to its volume, the next fader is the decay fader and it's, it deals in time as well. And it tells the synthesizer after the attack phase has completed how long until we are in the sustain phase. So this fader by itself does nothing. It only serves as a bridge to this fader, if that makes sense. So let me show you. So if I press a button, we have an instant attack because I didn't set, I didn't add any time. So we have an instant attack. It just comes on at note on. And then we have some amount of time until we get to this phase. Now, we don't hear any difference because it's going instantly up to the top. Well, I'm pointing to that part of the fader, but that's not correct. But it's going, and the, the attack phase is going instantly to the top of its amplitude. And because the sustain is set to all the way up to the top of its amplitude, there is no change. So it's going instantly up to here and just staying there. But if I, if I told it, to instantly go up to the top of its amplitude and then instantly come down to this volume, you see, instantly go up to your to the top of your amplitude, instantly come down to, that's interesting, there's always a little bit of time, 3.2 milliseconds on this synth, good to know. Um, anyway, almost instantly come down to this volume, instead of being at this volume, you'll hear it like this. So it's instantly, very instantly, almost instantly, going up to its peak volume and then dropping down to the volume that I set here. So it just sounds quieter to our ears, our ears now. But if I start adding time to the decay phase, if I start making the bridge between these two faders, this fader here and this fader here, if I start making the bridge between those faders longer in time, then you'll hear it differently. So what it's doing there is, in the attack phase, going up to its, its destination that it always goes to, taking this amount of time and then lowering itself from this volume down to that volume. That's what's happening. So that's, that's how those three faders work in concert. I hope you, I hope you wrapped your head around that. Cause that was the hardest part for me to understand that this doesn't do much on its own. It's these three working together to kind of massage a shape, an envelope shape into existence. Now the last fader is the release fader. This one's pretty easy to, to wrap your head around. We could even make like a quick little, like a quick sound. Now, what did I just do there? I just made a quick little plucky type sound. How I did that was, if you follow the, the settings here, instantly go up to your volume and over a short amount of time, come down to almost nothing. Or actually nothing, come down to nothing. So it's just boop, that's all it's doing when I, when I hit note on. Now, release pertains to what happens to the sound when you release the keys. So when I let go of the keys, how do you want, when you let go of the, the synthesizer is asking you, when you let go of the keys, how do you want me to handle the sound? And you're basically are adding a fade out and you're telling the synthesizer how long you want it to fade out. It's pretty much that simple. So you could add some release and take that sound that actually goes down to nothing and make it fade out a little bit, a bit. Now, as I'm showing you the release, I'm actually hitting the key, just like tapping it, because if I were to hold the key down, it's still in the sustain phase where it's all the way down. It's not until I release the key, well, there was no sound left. Uh, there was no sound left to release, to fade out because it had gone down to nothing. That's why I'm tapping it to see what the release would do. I hope that makes sense. 
so that's that's pretty much it. I mean, it's not the hugest concept, but it does need, it, at least for me, it needed to kind of be explained to me. Um, the other thing, there's one more thing that some synthesizers have that uh, it's called Hold. So check that one out. That one's actually on the global envelope here. Uh, so here, the difference is here on this type of envelope, the attack phase wants to go immediately into the decay phase. They're, they're really tied together in a way. So the only difference is if there's a hold section in between the attack and decay phase, you can create time between the time because the decay is always going to try to fade down, right? So you, you, you add some time. Am I, is that going to look right to you? Maybe I'll do it backwards. You add some time to the attack, right? But the decay phase is always right here. So, right, as you're, if your music is playing this way, as you're adding attack, your decay always wants to fade down. But if you have a hold parameter, you can actually create time before the decay comes in. Maybe I'll put some sort of graphic here. I'm not sure. But just see it as in between your attack and decay, you can add time which will keep you at the highest amplitude for the time that you set before the decay phase starts to fade you down because that's what it wants to do. That's what it does. It doesn't stay up and then come down. No, no. As soon as the, the, the decay phase comes in, it starts fading down. So that's hold. It's not on every synth. Um, it probably is on every modern synth now. But, you know, people reach back. I, I still like to use the classic synths. Um, so hold comes in handy when it's there. I hope that is clear. So yeah, that's pretty much it as far as ADSR goes or AD A H D S R. That was way harder than it needed to be. Uh, so anyway, uh, those are the concepts. Rattle those around in your head and play around with your favorite synths and start making some patches. I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if you haven't already taken the chance to, uh, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button, please leave a comment. I'm like at a race to get to a thousand subscribers and that's, uh, it's hard out there for a pimp. So uh, yeah, uh, I really want to uh, spend some more time doing these videos. Uh, I really uh, am enjoying myself. I've been getting a good response and this might be uh you know something i need to be doing so and doing more up so any help you could uh you could give me would be great anyway thank you so much for watching again um please oh if you know any producer friends that could use some help share this with them um yeah just get it out there yo you know what i'm saying and now i'm gonna solve this cube so here we go can't see with this mic in the way hold on the noisiest cube of all time. Oh, son. See ya. <laughs>